um, I just thought that I would ask you about when you when you toured, when you toured uh, with the Dominoes, so, right. because that's when you were touring in England, <clears throat> or even with Delaney and Bonnie. What were the what were the venues like? Do did that seem strange to you? Some of the places you played. No, we played all, like with Delaney, and we played any and everywhere. You know, uh, all kinds of different stages. Um, those outdoor, uh, uh, like Atlanta Pop Festival, those kind of things, are difficult because it's hard to hear. It was it's hard to hear anyway. You know, back in those days, and uh, I, I, especially piano, couldn't couldn't hear piano. It was a hell of a deal. But uh, the truant part was just elementary. It's getting point A to point B and doing the gig. Get on with it, you know. With the dominoes, you played some real small places. <laughs> we played some small places, but we also played um, some big places. But, you know, Fillmore East wasn't, wasn't that small. I mean, it wasn't that big either, you know. It was, but it's a good gig. Some of them were great and had, um, we played one thing with the dominoes in some uh, college. I think it might have been called Suffolk College or something. But it was during the day, you know, and so the gig it was like in the afternoon or something. And in, in this auditorium where there was a bunch of college students and uh, we didn't have tuning machines then. And so Eric's tuning, you know, tuning by ear and stuff, and uh, uh, guys said, fucking get on with it. You could hear them in the back, you know, <laughs> the talking, we were playing and shit. And these are, now we have all these uh, things, that are bootlegs, that people from in the audience, and you can hear people talking and what they're saying and everything. Like, <laughs> uh, but some of them were really great gigs, some of them were uh, they were all pretty much the same. As far as the band goes, we were great every every gig, you know. But it's just the venue itself. Some of them were better than the others, you know. But that was had to do with Sonics, you know. And, um, sure, the, how the room was. Uh, well, how did you pick tunes to do? I don't know. It just kind of happened. We would start out with something, and uh, you know. You just feel the crowd, play the crowd. Yeah, that's exactly right. Were, and it, just, it really would fall on how Eric felt, you know. Were you working on the songs that you guys were doing? or? Yeah, oh, we only did our own songs. When, when we were uh, getting all of our songs together, um, we would, of course, we had to have Sunshine of Your Love and some, you know, and, and uh, White Room. I mean, some other songs... That Eric and Eric's early from his earlier repertoire, because we didn't have enough tunes ourselves, you know, we hadn't written enough. Uh, we we had we had them all together, but there was, we hadn't got them caught up with them. But every time we would work, on, like "Why Does Love Got to Be So Sad," when we worked that out, we dropped something else. We dropped sun, "Sunshine of Your Love," right. you know. Uh, and eventually, we didn't have any of the uh, old old songs, you know, the old cream songs or anything like that. So when you were touring with Delaney and Bonnie, did you do the same thing? Did you already have your sets already worked out? Seems no, Delaney me, had it all. Delaney he, would do that. Yeah. Always, everything was everything was. Uh, yeah, was pre-planned. Yeah. Time. I mean, even timed. You know. Oh yeah. So. Uh, so he who, didn't, it was it was no foolishness at all with Delaney. It was all business. Yeah. You know when he got out there to do what he did, and couldn't nobody touch him. You know that's for dang sure. Uh, I, I, I got to play with him in, in, in his prime. You know, and same with everybody else. Leon, uh, you know, uh, Eric, I, I, all in their prime. Well, I was in mine. You know, hell, yeah, all of you were in your prime. You see, I got with Delaney and them when I was like 19. You know. Actually, you, I believe you were, I thought you were younger than that. Because they. You, may have been 18, but. Okay, well, probably 19. It's probably 19, I, I don't know. 
Oh, we can count, well, I we have can, selective memory sometimes. We, yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> you were 53 for about 10 years. I remember that. I know. I remember that. I got I, something it's, happened. When we first got together, you didn't. It's kind of like that. Yeah, it's kind of like the needle, <laughs> and then the skip, and then go back, and then skip, and go back. You didn't want to get older. Uh, no, nah, I, I want to hang in there in the early and then, 50s. And then we got to a point where we really didn't. But what know. was 53? You know, we I mean, know. what was so special? I wanted to stay 53. Because that's when we got together. Oh, okay. Well, then, and then, <laughs> then you didn't. Want I want to stay fifty-three. Yeah. You know, in some <laughs> form. Let's stop again. Well, you can blend it all together. You see, you can do work your magic on it. I'll do a little blending. Yeah, yeah. Hang on a second. So I, you know, I guess if we're gonna do these things every day. You know, was there any? Was there anybody that you had hoped to play with? During those days? No. I got to play with <laughs> the people that I wanted to play with. Uh, wow. I mean, I, 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 it, it didn't pass me by, you know, unnoticed. You know, I, uh, I didn't want to be a part of the uh, Mad Dogs and Englishmen. You know, uh, I wanted nothing to do with it after that. Did you ever but, show up when they were playing? There, I, there is actually. Oh, I, there was one time, I think it was in L.A. or something. You can see you on the stage, actually. Yeah, but I, I don't know how I look then and, and what I look like now. You know, I don't know. You look like a kid. <laughs> yeah, but that was a backstage thing. So. No, no, no. This was on the stage. Well, yeah. You were but standing I, back off the stage, but you were, you were on the stage. I remember the gig. It was out there in L.A. Form Did they ever ask you to be a part of that Mad Dogs thing? No, because they knew I was stuck. Because when they were putting it all together, I was staying with Delaney and them, you know. That was my deal. I, 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 I started that with them, and I wanted to finish it with them. <coughs> and, and that's what I did, you know. Right. We did uh, the home album. And uh, something else, and uh, then it was time for me to leave. You know, I had to go to Delaney from Bonnie, and it was just getting rough around there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I witnessed it all, man. I gotta tell you, you know, I was young and. I was taking it all in. God damn. I was living with those people, so, you know. Well, you were living across the street from them. With well, when I went there, I wound up, I was living with them first, at first. Now, how <laughs> long did that last? <laughs> Too goddamn long. <laughs> how long did that last? Uh, I went to Hawthorne, and, and uh, I left Memphis, and, and my deal was Stax, uh, to go uh, start a band with Delaney and Bonnie. And so... Uh, I went to Hawthorne, they picked me up <laughs> in a, yeah, a, a blue Volkswagen, 66 Volkswagen, and uh, uh, went back to the house, and it was a two-bedroom house, and I, I got the couch, and <laughs> Delaney, <laughs> pregnant, Bonnie, uh, me, Mama, oh. uh, and, and, and the girls, were, then it was... Uh, she, she was pregnant with, with Becca and, and had Suzanne and then Michelle would come over to, from time to time and the, then Preston was living, her ex-husband, he was living in the garage. <laughs> God, <laughs> and, and then from there I went to live at the plantation with Jimmy Carstein and, and um, Andy Neal Davis and, and uh, uh, Chuck Blackwell. So that didn't last very long. No, no. It was just enough for me to get out there and get my feet wet and learn how to roll a joint. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bonnie Bonnie showed me how to do a roll a joint. I've never even seen pot until I got to the Lane Bonnie's house. And it was all <laughs> up, oh, up and downhill <laughs> from there on. <laughs> up and downhill. Up and downhill. <laughs> And I love the story where you borrowed Carl's uh, triumph. His triumph. Yeah, I, I, cause I was stuck in the valley, you know, and <laughs> I, I had to find my way around further than I walked. I mean, we lived off of Ventura Boulevard. I, was, I mean, it takes forever to get anywhere. So. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, he let me borrow his triumph Bonneville so I could find my way around. Uh, Carl Radle did, 
And he, he lived with a girlfriend, Judy, and they had a, a red Irish setter named Dixie. And uh, boy, it was a beautiful dog, too. But he had a Triumph Bonneville. Then he said, just, just take my motorcycle and find your way around. And I did. I was riding all up through the hills on that Triumph. Had a ball. So you met some colorful people there. <clears throat> Tiny Tim. <laughs> Well, you know, it's really strange that you bring up Tiny Tim because... You knew Tiny Tim. Yes, he was... He actually gave me my first start in the music industry. Yeah. <laughs> in Italy. In Italy. And uh, we drove him around for however long he was there. Took him out to get food. Oh, and he wore, he wore the right. same suit each I met, time. Yeah, I met him at Alan Parisa's house. Tiny Tim was a lovely man. Yeah, he was a really lovely was. man. That's for sure. But yeah, that's a strange story. I have never admitted to it, never opened up about it ever. Oh, hell. But I mean, I, I feel now I, how I feel about it is. Don't, aren't you fortunate? He was very close to, to my heart. He was a very. Yeah, to have gotten to know Tiny Tim. And to give me that opportunity to get on stage with him. And yeah, yeah. It was really amazing, actually. I can hear his voice. I. Yeah, real melodic. <laughs> it's like, like someone's. You know, elderly aunt. <laughs> he he was, and he was just extremely sweet. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. Really, really, really great, lovely person. Anyway, sorry to get off the track of that. So, who who are there? Some of the other people that you met in, in Hollywood. Oh hell, pretty much everybody because everybody wanted to uh, meet us and hear hear us when we got the Delaney and Bonnie and friends together. Forget about it. I mean, we shut them down everywhere we played. Couldn't nobody touch us. And that band went on to, you know, to be, you know, uh, Derek and the Dominoes. Had a great rhythm section, Carl, Jim, and me. Who, who, who were some of the people that you got to meet? Hell, I don't know. <laughs> All those Hollywood folks, you know. Yeah. Um, I was like, I, I just kept myself to myself, you know. They were, it was their show. Didn't you meet? There were the stars. Didn't you, you meet know? Jaja Gabor? Well, I met Jaja Gabor at her house in uh, south of France. Oh, that was well, in France. It had to oh. do with Jimmy Miller and, and uh, George Gray. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, Dolly. Yeah. Salvador Dolly. Salvador. <laughs> I wonder how he would think now of your 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 work. Your I bet he would. I bet he would like it. You know, you know. Uh, uh, it was an eclectic room, that's for sure. You know. Well, what are some of your fondest memories of those days? All of my memories are fond. You know, <laughs> I'm fond of all of them, <laughs> <laughs> the good and the bad. You know. We stayed in a great hotel. Uh, that was a, uh, it was a twelve room hotel in London. George and Jimmy used to get and a groovy staying at that old hotel. George, ah, I are used you talking it. about George Greif? George Greif, yeah. I used that uh, part of the hotel in a photograph on, on one of my albums, on the Raw Velvet album. Right. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I found this. this his chair was in the bar. And there, there are only 12 rooms, and it's a real exclusive you know, like club kind of a thing, you know. Matter of fact, the casino was just across the way and down around the corner. But I um, uh, uh, got run over by a train of thought. Well, you were getting, doing the photograph of your career. Oh, of, of the thing. There was a, a big chair that was in the bar. And big high back chair, you know, velvet, crushed velvet, right up my my kind of my kind of chair, you know. <laughs> and I grabbed it, drug it out into the dining room to set up a shot in front of this big fireplace. Oh Lord, have mercy! It hadn't been that chair hadn't been moved in 175 <laughs> years, and they about had a cow, you know. I said, well, it was about time somebody moved. <laughs> Yeah, it had been sitting there. That they said it had had not been moved in 175 years. Well, I, I made it famous, you know. It's on <laughs> it's on the album cover. But uh, <laughs> uh, that's that's about it, you know. 
All right, well... Uh, well silly, true, your stuff, you know. Well, it's fun to listen to, you know, enjoy enjoy hearing all I don't mind, I don't mind. We'll talk saying. about your, your, your first two records again, you know, because I, I can... Sometimes it seems like I can barely get the information out of you, so... Yeah, well, my you? first album... I, I did a deal with Atlantic, and they wanted to... Uh, Tom Dowd and uh, Jerry Wexler to produce me and, and um, with New York musicians. And I didn't want that. And so I took my own money and uh, I bought my contract back from uh, Atlantic. And I went into the studio uh, at Olympic and, well, I decided I was going to make my own record and I was going to produce it myself. And, uh, I asked Jim Gordon. He was game. Carl, you know, went right down. Eric, went. George Harrison. Cause see, I played on their records, so I figured if I, if I played on their record, they can play on mine. You know, and, 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 and they were more than happy to do it. And they were more than happy to do it. And so, had Klaus Vorman uh, on bass as well, and uh, Jim Gordon, and I mean, we were it was smoking. George Harrison, as far as from me to you, in front of me, we did already have done two songs, and he was facing me right as, as within four feet. And um, he said, I said, we got finished with doing a day without Jesus, and uh, where there's a will, there's a way. And uh, matter of fact, Eric played, was that the one he played bass on? No, that was Hello LA Bye Bye Birmingham. But when we got finished doing, uh, doing two songs, uh, I said, well, I guess that's it. <laughs> I didn't realize we were going to knock them out that quick. And George said, why don't you just write another one? He said, you don't have one prepared? Why don't you just write another one? And so I just started, I, I said, B minor, you know. <laughs> and of all the things, that and B minor, just start playing something off the top of my head, in B minor on a B3, was I, I was going to myself, what did you do? <laughs> what the hell did you just do? <laughs> and so this thing, but it all came out, you know? Awesome. The, <coughs> the story and everything, which it all song, fell together. Which song was it? Uh, uh, back in my life, was oh, it Back in my Life song. Again? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody actually wanted you to talk about Back in My Life Again. They love it. Yeah, so but it was boy, it's really, really cool, you know, what everybody played and everything is like. But we knocked it out, so we did uh, my my record. We did three of the songs. So and, if it hadn't been for George, you wouldn't have... No, uh -uh, it wouldn't have happened that That's way. That's awesome. No. George Harrison, not George Clinton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. George. George Harrison, for sure. All right, well, uh... Dinner time? Go <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to say it, but yes. Okay. Sante.